bunch of gamers, one channel, and tons of games. This must be Games and Me. The following episode was recorded on May 30th, 2009. Hey guys, welcome to Twee Game. So you guys are probably going to be noticing that we're going to be talking about news articles that probably, you know, got released either today or yesterday or whatever. That's because, guess what? This was recorded on Saturday, so we're actually talking about the news from last week that we already know is happening. Like, we don't have, you know, like, Miss Cleo to kind of tell us that there's a new PSP coming out or a new Gran Turismo coming out for the PSP, or do we? So let's start, in, let's start by introducing everybody who's going to be in the team by asking them the community question of the week. So we have Benzo8686, so what... The, the the community question of the week is, what do you want us to check out this E3? Well, uh, for me personally, I know some people kind of they're a little iffy about it, but I'm I'm gonna go with Dead Rising too, just because it's one of those games that not everybody's really talking about, and I I love the first one, and I just uh, you know I'm I'm thinking looking forward to that one. Cool. Personally. <laughs> That's awesome. I think Mark is looking forward to that game too. So, And we also have Magus. So what do you want us to check out at E3, bro? Oh, yeah. Um, ch- maybe get a hands-on on the new PSP Go. See how it feels, you know, how you know how comfortable it is. You know, if you could get a hands-on it, that would be cool. Oh. Um, if, if they let you have hands-on, I don't know how that works there, but... um. That and one other thing, um, if you can find something out about Harmony of Lunar, Harmony of Silver Star. <laughs> oh, yeah, most definitely. I'll definitely like keep an eye out for you. And of course, we also have Chris. So, what do you want us to check out at E3, bro? First and foremost, Ghostbusters. Okay. Because I really want that game, and uh, I'll go with uh, also go with uh, Halo. <laughs> ODST, because you know, there's just not much info out there on it. So. Oh, you're only saying that because I told you guys that no one wants us to. Ch- no one has <laughs> said to check us out. You know. Yeah, for us exactly. To check out, so. Okay, fine. All right, let's go check out the news from last week, shall we? So the first news article is by Virgil Dante 100 from the forums. And again, if you wanna want us to talk about any news articles or things that you know, like that are of note. Just post them on forum.gamesn.me. There's an appropriate thread that says suggest topics for this week's tweet game, and we'll give you credit for it. This one talks about the new Grand Theft Auto 4 DLC entitled The Ballad of Gay Tony. So I actually posted a support, I guess, a support article about this. Um, They're also going to be selling... um, the Ballad of Gay Tony and The Lost and the Damned as a separate disc, which does not require Grand Theft Auto 4 on there. And I thought that was actually a pretty cool idea. So um, let's start with you, Magus. What do you think about this game? I'm pretty pumped for it. I mean, I haven't played as much of Lost of the Damned as I should have, but from what I heard and from what I played of it, they're doing a really good job as making more expansion packs and worth the 20 bucks. So if they, you know... Make it with the length and the quality that they did with Lost in Dam. I'll definitely check it out. And as for the the disc idea, that that is just ingenious. I yeah. think. Yeah, it's That's like all. Ingenious. Yeah, it's almost like a standalone expansion pack. You know, That's really crazy. Oh yeah, yeah. I I mean, you know, it's. I mean, we see we're seeing a lot of companies do this with their downloadable content, like with Fallout Three. You know, with the the pit and the Operation Anchorage, but you still have to have the game and stuff. If you just want to play the Lost in Them, because I know people out there who aren't particularly fond of Nico and stuff, you know, and they don't want to play his game, they could just jump in and play uh, those two. So that's what I got to say on that. 
All right. Well, how about you, Chris? Are you looking forward to stepping in the shoes of Luis Lopez? Not really. I mean, I, I really never got into GTA, so personally, I could care less. But, I mean, if it's doing good, if they're making money on it, I say more power to them. That's cool. It seems to be a little bit more lighthearted than the other two, you know, like the main story of GTA 4 and, uh, you know, Lost in the Damned and stuff. So how about you, Benzo? What do you think about this? Well, I, I kind of agree with Chris. You know, I mean, I, I like GTA, but it's just, I, I kind of lost track after, uh, you know, after the San Andreas, to be honest. You know, I just kind of started straying away from it. I wouldn't mind checking it out, though. So, I mean, like you said, if it's going to make money, then do it up. But, you know, if I get to see it, I get to play it, you know, I'll give it a shot. Good call. Good call. All right. So the next article is actually by you, Chris. Yay. This one is... This one says, Big Boss and Raiden appear on Kojima's teaser site, but this was automatically outdated because you forgot one important thing. At the at the 90-hour mark, I think what happened was in the lower right-hand corner, the Kojima Productions logo started morphing into a very creepy mask. So <laughs> I'll start with you, Chris. So what do you, th- um, what do you think um, those these two games are? Because they're obviously two different games. Uh, you know what? I have no idea. I just have to wait and see. But uh, I don't. I don't know why people are push, pushing for another Metal Gear game this this early. I mean, it, it's what been a year since four came out. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's too early. I mean, I guess if they start working on one, it'll be a while before it comes out. But I don't. I don't see the point in people pushing for another game at the moment. Okay. Well, there was a there was an interview. Um, by Famitsu to Hideo Kojima that was addressed on, you know, that was dated December 2008 that basically said, you know, it, it had Kojima essentially saying, we admit we're working on not one, but two different projects. One is going to be in line with what we've already done in the past, <coughs> Metal Gear, and the other one is a game that's going to be quote-unquote specifically targeted towards the Western audience. So what do you think that, quote-unquote, specifically targeted towards Western audience actually mean? Mm, I don't know. It could be anything, knowing him. Something (laughs) totally convoluted and crazy, save-the-planet type of hippie thing. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So how about you, Magus? What do you think that uh, second project is? Because we know that the first one has got to be a Metal Gear. Yeah, yeah, that's obvious. I I think we were talking earlier and there was something about Metal Gear being on PSP. So mm-hmm. with the I think the big boss picture may be like a prequel kind of like Portable Ops. Or maybe, maybe a type. sequel to yeah, Portable Ops. Yeah, a sequel Ops. to well, yeah. Yeah, kind of like a prequel a sequel to Portable Ops but a prequel to the rest of the series. Ah, so, that should be interesting. Like the found well didn't uh, Portable Ops kind of end though, like you know, as a, you know, like leading towards like Outer Heaven? I've never played Portable Ops, so I'm not, you know. I've played a little bit of it and such, but that's what I was thinking. I, I okay. really not sure. All right, but yeah, it could be two. It could be a portable, and it could be um another Metal Gear. But I have to agree with Chris, though. I would like to see Kojima work on an on a on a new IP or revisit like snatcher and do it in like a newer style more cinematic style or something well that's but what that's i was just... asking you because like yeah. obviously the first game is going to be a metal gear that's yeah that's blatantly obvious you see right in you see a big boss yes but the other one is just a corroding mask of what oh. seems to be a woman so that was out that's what i was talking about when i said like oh it's it's okay. geared towards a western audience whatever that means so Knowing full well that they visited Infinity Ward and Treyarch and all those like you know U.S. companies, what do you think that mask is? I don't know. Um, <laughs> okay. It might, you know, it looks kind of robotic though. The, the, maybe or I don't know if it, I don't know if it looks robotic or ancient. It looks kind of hard. If it's robotic, maybe it's some sort of snatcher done in a Western, more Western. Style. I'm hoping for a snatcher, but you know. Yeah, we we can only hope. So. Yeah. How about you, Ben? So, what do you think? Oh, man, I, I, I have no idea. I've been running, I've been running it through my head. I'm not entirely sure, dude. Um, 
you know, I think a snatcher would be awesome. I, w- I would love to see that. That would be great. But um, obviously, like you said, one's got to be a Metal Gear, even though, like Chris was saying, you know, there was just one out. <laughs> yeah, last year. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but I mean, I- I'm not sure. I- I re- I'm really at a loss. I'm not sure at all, to be entirely honest. Okay, I have an idea of what this is. There's rapid speculation on the internet that the mask of the girl is actually none other than Naomi Campbell, which, you know, I kind of chirp at and kind of, like, laugh at. But maybe it's a Naomi, you know, hunter simulation, dating sim. 